We're often warned of the need to keep our personal information secure, especially in this digital age. But did you know that depending on what kind of data is stolen, its price varies significantly across different black markets? According to research done by security software company Trend Micro, your credit card information is worth much in China, valued at over $1,600. But that same information is worth a mere pittance. In Russia, for example, a mere $5. And what accounts for this huge disparity? And how can we safeguard our data from being stolen? Here to share his viewpoint is David Xia. He's country manager of Trend Micro. Glad to have you with us, David. Hey, thanks, Don. So let's cut straight to the chase. Why this big disparity uh, between the value of personal information? I think we always believe that you know, the, the global cybersecurity underground is actually very similar to an uh, open economy, but it's actually not. Right? It differs from country to country. Take, for example, in Russia, it is a very mature market. There is a lot of competition. In fact, the Russian hackers try to bring their product to the market very quickly. So what it means is that with such a massive supply of you know, breached data, it means that the price would eventually drop. It's just a simple demand and supply issue, actually. So you mentioned Russia there, and according to Trend Micro, uh, Brazil, China, Russia, they're all major players in, in the cyber criminal economy. Why? I think it's also a lot to do with you know, uh, the maturity of the cyber underground in all these countries. Take, for example, in China, we have a very high-tech cyber criminal underground. The tools that they use, malware that they use, tend to be very sophisticated. Whereas in our case, when we see Brazil, for example, Brazil is actually a market that is based on stardom, right? It, everything is conducted on the surface web. There is a lot of social media involved, a lot of bragging rights are involved in a successful hacking. It is not as commercially oriented, say, for example, in China, in Russia, for example. Okay. How did you go about collecting this data then, uh, David? I think the data could be collected on a few fronts. In Trend Micro, we have been collecting all this data since 2009. And we have used a variety of methods. Firstly, we could use automated robots that uh, scour the web for breach information or for malware, for example. But more importantly, we actually collect unstructured dark, uh, data through researchers as well. Right. We have forward track researchers who actually interact with the black market, for example. We understudy them. We actually conduct chats with them to learn a little bit more about the tools, the mechanisms, how they work. So speaking of that, how do they get all of that done? I think um, it is a very organized, you know, un unbelievably so, and I read the report as well. We seem to see a very well-oiled machinery, especially in the Russian cyber criminal underground. Take for example, there is a group of people who specializes in creating the malicious software, and they specialize in renting this malicious software to a group of cyber criminals who exploit them to breach companies, for example, who take their data, and they actually sell them to a group of guarants or guarantors, for example. They take a commission and they actually send out the data to people who are willing to pay a good price for it. And so I suppose, ultimately, it's a question of trying to stay one step ahead of the cyber criminals rather than always being one step or two steps behind them. Yeah, I'm afraid it's a race that we are always engaged in, right? Every day we are racing against the cyber criminal on the ground. All right, thank you very much, David, uh, for that uh, perspective. David Sia, the country manager at Trend Micro.